For those of you who don't follow the Chamber, my name is Tim Cahill, and this event was supposed to take place on April 7, 2020. So I have been waiting a long time to talk. And I thank you all very, very much for being here. Congratulations to everyone. We have a very short, condensed speaking um, program here. Um, and then we want to get back to doing what you have obviously enjoyed doing since you got here, which is uh, get together, hug old friends, make some new friends, and get back to normal life. So just bear with us, because we have a couple of very important awards to give out too. So I want to welcome everyone for making it to our event, and especially today in less than ideal weather conditions. But unfortunately, we couldn't control that. Before I begin, I would like to acknowledge the companies and businesses that have made this event so possible. Our sponsors, our event sponsor, South Shore Bank. Thank you, South Shore Bank. Our showcase sponsor, Bank of Canton. Thank you, Bank of Canton. And we have three cocktail sponsors, Murphy, Hesse, Toomey, Lehane, Baker, Braverman, and Barbadoro, and the Norwell Visiting Nurses Association um, in hospice. Thank you all very much for supporting us. Many of you have also been waiting over a year to be able to do this. So um, we also want to acknowledge um, over 20 Chamber of Business sponsors um, who you can see depicted on the video screen in the left-hand corner of this hall, this tent. Um, usually we have uh, expo tables, uh, but we weren't able to do that. That unfortunately was something we had to give in um, because of COVID, but hopefully next year we'll be back with the expo tables. But we do want to acknowledge the businesses that stepped up, usually stepped up, and always step up on our behalf. I also want to thank my team at the Chamber, Melissa Burke and Paula Pesovich, who do so much good work here. They do everything I ask of them and more, and our Chamber would not be what it is today if it weren't for the two of them, so I'm grateful for everything that they do. It's amazing what two people can pull off on short notice, and they certainly do it all the time. This past year has been one very long, continuous loop of the television show Survivor. So as the series host, Jeff Prost would often remind the contestants, your job is to outwit, outlast, and outplay, and to meet every challenge I put before you. Fortunately, nobody here has been asked to hold heavy bags of sand with your arms outstretched while standing on a skinny pole over water. But many of you were asked and often told to run your business in a way to keep the public safe, which meant not running it at full speed, running it with a mask on all day and night, and sometimes not opening it at all. And you did it every day for the past year. That is what you all did this past year. Nobody made it easy for you. The rules continually changed, and you worked harder and lived through more stress than ever before. The reason for this event today is not to talk about the Quincy Chamber and go through a list of our accomplishments, but instead to tell you that you won. You survived. The game was real, the challenges often overwhelming, and the only way off the island was to either quit or to persevere. And persevere you did. Nobody in this room quit. Congratulations to you all. Now, I can't offer each of you a million dollars unless the mayor brought some federal COVID relief money with him. <laughs> but I can and will offer my sincere appreciation to you all for accepting the challenge, meeting it head on, and making it all the way to the end. And we will continue as the chamber to support you and fight for you and be there for you every day going forward. And for that, we just want to say thank you. Thank you very, very much for your continued support and everything you do for us. Now it is my pleasure to introduce you Jim Dunphy, the CEO of our main sponsor tonight, South Shore Bank, 
Jim is a great friend of the chamber and a supporter of so many important, vital organizations in this city. I told Jim that he didn't have to wear a tie tonight, but he informed me that as a banker, it was against his religion to come or go anywhere without a tie. So it's a pleasure to bring up Jim Dunphy to introduce Mayor Tom Cope. Good evening, everyone. Mayor Tom Koch, elected in 2007, Mayor Koch has served as mayor of the city of Quincy for the past 14 years. I am sure that this past year has felt like the longest. Despite a worldwide pandemic, a public health crisis, and the resulting economic shutdown of many important segments of the business community, Mayor Koch and his administration rose to the occasion meeting the cha many challenges head on and without fear. His support of the business community resulted in over $5 million in direct grants to small businesses and rental support for their employees who temporarily lost their jobs. The city remained open for construction projects on both the public and private side, keeping blue collar and union workers on the job, off of unemployment, and able to put food on the table for their families. Transit-oriented development projects like the Abigail in North Quincy and Chestnut Place in Quincy Center stayed on schedule, either opening or getting ready to, and new housing projects were given the green light so that Quincy can continue to play its important role as the gateway to the South Shore, providing housing and services to those who need it most, our young people. Under Mayor Koch's administration, Quincy never missed a beat in 2020. The additional revenue that these new private projects will provide to the city's tax base have paved the way for three new public schools built and opened over the past decade. Quincy High School, Central Middle, and Southwest Middle Schools, as well as the new Squanum Elementary School being designed as we speak. Adding to these improvements in public education will soon be a new public safety headquarters for both the police and fire departments. Perhaps his most enduring legacy to our city will be the creation of new public green spaces and parks for all of our citizens to enjoy. These include the majestic Hancock Adams Common, the newly activated Kilroy Square, and the soon to be completed General's Park. It's an honor for me both as CEO of South Shore Bank and as a resident of Quincy to introduce to you the longest serving mayor in Quincy, Tom Koch. Thank you, Jim, uh, for that kind introduction, but there's nothing left for me to say. Um, it is an honor to be the mayor of this great city, uh, and he mentioned the longest serving. I'm not done yet, so uh, be patient. And I certainly want to acknowledge my colleagues in government who are here. I see Councillor DeBonner and Councillor Kane. I see school committee members Frank Santura and Emily Lebo. Uh, in this this past year. I know some great accolades were thrown to the administration, but we got through this because we came together as a city. We came together as a community. We worked hard with one another. There were no egos. Everyone just rolled up the sleeves and took it one day at a time. Uh, and that goes for the chamber. I'm so proud of the partnership we've had with Tim and, and the chamber on, on getting some of those programs on the street, working with our planning department. Uh, and at the end of the day, uh, here we are together once again up here at this great location at Granite Lakes. I also should acknowledge uh, my pal, we went in together, the former Mayor Branchy, you get out in time, Joe. Good planning, good timing. Good to see you, Joe Sullivan. <laughs> also certainly want to offer my congratulations to those that are gonna be honored tonight, Cubic Labs and that great creativity, Ian Kane and his gang, and. Certainly, uh, when you talk about Hall of Fame in the business community, Phyllis Godwin is one of those names that comes to you immediately. 
remarkable woman. Um, so we congratulate uh, Phyllis and Kubik uh, for all the great work, and of course, there you are, Phyllis. You never look any different. You never change. Anyway, um, it's great to be here. I know, as you know, there's a lot going on, as, as was mentioned by Jim. We didn't miss a beat. I congratulate you and thank you for your ingenuity, for your creativity, for your perseverance. This was a very difficult year for everybody. And uh, we're seeing, uh, obviously, uh, it get behind us now. I was saying at one point to my chief of staff, Chris Walker, you know, the, the year seemed to be dragging, but the last three months seemed to just have flown by, which means we're back at it. And uh, that's a great thing for all of us, and certainly for the economy of the city. And some of you may have read, uh, we've got some things going on. Uh, we haven't slowed down. There's, uh, anytime there's a challenge or a crisis, there's always opportunity. And an awful lot of work and planning was being done as we were going through this difficult year. And last week we announced the next phase of the downtown, which has been part of the master plan for the last uh, more than decade now, with three incredible new projects with Joey Akari coming from his footprint in South Boston, uh, incredible restaurant owner and uh, real estate man. And he's going to be building a beautiful facility, two-story restaurant, along with some residential units above. Sam Slater, a well-heeled uh, old company from Boston, Brookline area. He's going to be doing two buildings, uh, 115, 115 to 20, residential, re apartments, retail. Uh, but also, uh, one of the projects we've been talking about as a city for some time and that is a special, special place for a performing arts center. We've, we've been talking... <laughs> we've been talking about the Quincy 400 coming up in 2025, and when we were out meeting with people and, and getting input and listening, the most common, common comment we were getting back was along the lines of a cultural center, performing arts center, center for the arts, whatever you may want to call it, the same theme. So it's really thrilling to be talking about an actual facility now and uh, hopefully will be open before our 400 celebration in 2025. Uh, he mentioned, uh, Jim mentioned the new park, the General's Bridge and Dedication. September 11th, mark your calendar. That will be dedicated Saturday, September 11th, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. If anybody here grew up in Quincy and went in the service, or now lives in Quincy and is a veteran. We ask you to reach out to my office. We, we're up to about 450 names. We invite you to become part of our honorary committee that day. you would be part of the program when we honor five living generals. There's 18 generals from Quincy since the Revolutionary War. But there's five that will be with us. Uh, pretty amazing individuals, pretty remarkable stories from the great Quincy Mass. So we had two presidents from city and we call the city of presidents. So 18 generals in Quincy. It may become the city of generals, who, who knows? So mark your calendar, it's gonna be a great day. I know Jim mentioned the project in North Quincy. There was, a, there was some discussion and it was, certainly wasn't unanimous, the, the thoughts about development of a safe seven and a half acre asphalt parking lot serving really uh, and they're doing not, not much good for the economy at all. If you've been by North Quincy, you see the buildings up, the garage is in. I talked to DJ McKinnon recently. Bazudo is way ahead of schedule on renting the apartments. They can't keep up at this point. So for those that say, who's going to live here? All these units, they're moving in. And that's, uh, that's a great sign for this great city. So. With the continued private investment, hand in hand with the continued public investment, we're making the city of Quincy the greatest city in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Thanks to you for that. Thanks to my colleagues in government for that. Let's, let's keep it going. God bless and have a great evening. Thank you, Mayor Koch. Um, good evening, my name is Mike Feenan. Um, I am the uh, current chair of the chamber board. And to stick with uh, Tim's survivor theme, mercifully I've been voted off the island, so this is uh, coming to the conclusion of my term. Um, but for the past two years I've served as uh, the chairperson of the uh, chamber board, 
um, and it has been a, a great honor. Um, I do want to say thank you to Tim, Melissa, and Paula for your unwavering hard work and dedication to the Chamber. Uh, the Chamber, like so many of our businesses over the past year, faced big challenges. Um, and so I'm proud, I'm so proud of our, our management team for remaining committed and flexible and creative throughout COVID. Um, most importantly, I want to thank all of you, our sponsors and our members, for continuing to support the Chamber during one of its most challenging years in recent memory. The Chamber only exists for you and because of you, so thank you so much for your ongoing support. Now it's my privilege to announce the winner of this year's Bruce Wood Small Business Grant. As many of you know, Bruce Wood was a founding board member of the Quincy Chamber of Commerce, founder of Wood Commercial Painting, now a second generation family business here in Quincy, uh, and a pillar of our community involved in local organizations from the Chamber to Rotary to Quincy Youth Hockey, uh, soccer and baseball. This grant is awarded annually to a local small business, exemplifying Bruce's entrepreneurial community and phil philanthropic spirit. So this year's Bruce Woods Small Business Grant goes to Cubic Labs, a startup incubator and innovation hub right here in Quincy Center with the goal of fostering a thriving FinTech, civic and government tech economy and creating a thousand local tech jobs over the next 10 years. Here to accept this award is Cubic founder, Ian Kane. Thank you for, thanks for braving the elements to be here tonight. Uh, it's nice to see everyone out in public and to see faces once again. It's almost like a reunion for everyone in Quincy, especially for the business community, which is nice to get everyone together. Um, first of all, thank you very much to the Chamber for organizing this event. Thank you for this award. Uh, we're honored to be receiving the Bruce Wood Award. I had the privilege to know Bruce for many years. First, when I was his paper boy, when I was nine years old, when I delivered the Patriot Ledger. And that's how I came to know Kathy, Bruce, and their wonderful family of kids. Uh, Tim lives right behind us now, so we see them regularly all throughout the city. I guess it's uh, almost uh, ironic that people from the Highland Ave, South Central, Wollaston Hill Corridor have won this event over the past year. So I have to recognize uh, Bill Lebo and his team from Dive Technologies who are here tonight and also uh, Ms. Barkas from Perfections, who are the prior winners of the Bruce Wood Award. Uh, it's great to be in their august company and sharing this award. And I also want to, of course, honor uh, Ms. Goodwin, Ms. Godwin, for her achievement tonight. Congratulations. So I'm, I'm honored to accept this award tonight on behalf of myself and my co-founder, John O'Keefe, who couldn't be here. He's up in Portland, Maine. They just had a baby less than a month ago, so he's on dad duty. Um, I have to thank my mom and dad who have supported me every step of the way, which I would not be standing here today if it weren't for them. Unfortunately, my mother couldn't be here. My dad is standing over next to Kathy right now. I would be remiss if I didn't honor my love and my life partner, Larry Liuzzo, standing in the back here. Thank you for being my rock, and thank you for being supportive. I would not have been able to start Cubic if it weren't for you. Um, and I also have to thank our sponsors. So South Shore Bank makes the rounds. They're one of our sponsors as well at Cubic Labs. Uh, Jim Dunphy uh, was kind to strike our first check, which I will never forget him for. And <laughs> And I also have to thank Fox Rock Properties who underwrites our real estate. And uh, last but not least, I have to thank the mayor for his support 
uh, in seeing the vision for Cubic Labs. He and his office, uh, the planning and community development team as well. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Scribby, we have Maureen Geary, and folks who have helped us through the CDBG grant process to secure more funding to make sure that we can fulfill our promise to create jobs here in the city of Quincy. We're really looking to connect to the broader ecosystem that you all support today through your small businesses and business creation. We want to bring tech and entrepreneurship and innovation south of Boston. Unfortunately, we've been left out of this party for many years, so it's time to bring some of that energy south of Boston and to complement the real estate projects that have been spearheaded by our mayor. So, in conclusion, thank you again. It's so uh, great to be welcomed by this, by this community tonight. I'm so thankful for the chamber, for, for Kathy and Mike Wood for being here tonight. And uh, please enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you very much. I am so excited to see you all. And can you guys hear me in the back? I know it's loud. OK, awesome, perfect. Um, first, I want to say thank you to Mike um, a year ago, I was supposed to take over as chair, and with COVID, it really devastated my business, and I am forever thankful for Mike for taking on the challenges of running the chamber with Tim this past year. The two of them have done so much to support Quincy businesses and help all of us through this. Um, there's more ups and downs, I think, ahead of us as we all recover, but it's so good to finally see all of us out to see the economy reopening, see businesses coming back. And uh, Jim Dumphy, I am so happy to see you're wearing a tie. <laughs> My business is dependable cleaners, we're dry cleaners. We love ties, we do a really good job on ties. All right, you know, as I said, there's ups and downs to come, but I believe strongly in the city of Quincy and I believe strongly in the leadership um, both within the city and within all of the businesses and the people of Quincy. And I am so honored to become the chair and to work with all of you in this next year. Um, and then an even bigger honor is to be able to talk about this award tonight. So first, let me get it. So this award is bringing Granite City Electric Supply Company and Phyllis Papani Godwin into the Hall of Fame for the Quincy Chamber of Commerce. say a few think words before Phyllis comes up here to speak to you all. Um, first I'll read from the plaque itself. So she is the 2021 inductee. Found Quincy, um, Granite City Electric Supply Company was founded in Quincy in 1923 by Italian immigrant and World War I veteran Nicholas Papani to meet the great need and opportunity for a local electrical supply house for Quincy and the South Shore. He was succeeded as chair and CEO by his daughter, Phyllis. She assumed ownership in 1969. The company has grown to five New England states, 28 locations, two distribution centers. Today, it is one of the largest women-owned businesses in Massachusetts and a classic example of an Italian immigrant's American dream. <laughs> In classic Phyllis world, she asked me to speak more about Granite City than about her. Personally, I wanted to talk about her because of the impact that she's had on me and so many of the people that are in this room. I thought when she reached out to me when I first joined the family business or rejoined after graduating and working outside, that it was all about mentoring women, and she did that. She was an incredible mentor to so many women. But what I've heard in talking to so many of the people in this room and outside this room is that she was a mentor to all of us. And 
you know, she was a role model because she was the first to do many things. The first woman, she was, ran one of the largest women-owned businesses for a long time in the state of Massachusetts, certainly within the city of Quincy. She was one of the first women to get into Rotary and really helped more women get involved. Um, she was the first president, female president of the South Shore Chamber of Commerce. But, you know, one of the things that I've learned about Phyllis that I find, you know, she came into the business and there weren't as many opportunities. Like she would have loved to go to Harvard Business School, but she went to Radcliffe instead because that's what was available at that time. But later, she went to Suffolk and got her MBA. You know, when she wanted to learn something, she reached out and she figured out how to learn what she needed to learn. And then she seemed to have taken that and to reach out to others and said, I'm an open book, you know, ask me any questions and let me help. One of the things that she said in an article many years ago was that her way when she was running Granite City was to listen, ask question, questions, and help people feel comfortable and help them lead their way. And to learn to become stronger is what I would say. Some of the words that come to mind when I think of Phyllis is caring. I always felt great joy surrounding her. She's engaged. You know, you knew when you had a conversation with her, it was never a one-way conversation. She would ask you tough questions, and she expected you to ask her tough questions. Incredibly smart, really practical, forward-thinking, a change agent. You know, some of the things that she's put forth that we've all benefited from throughout the South Shore, the Athena, the women's groups at South Shore Chamber, I, just her being around all of us and elevating us. Um, so, educating, mentoring, caring. Her legacy is the business, the growth of the business, the innovation that she brought to the business. It's also the love that she has for her family, all of you all here. all of the love that she has for all of us and the greater community um, and overall her wisdom. And I just want to personally thank her for how she reached out to me when I first returned to the family business and I was just so new and she reached out immediately and got me involved and helped me to see how strong I could be. And I will be forever thankful for that as well. So Phyllis, if you could please join me up here, I would love to give you this award and to have you say a few words. chairman of the chamber here in Quincy. Granite City Electric and I are truly, truly honored to be the first company to be inducted into this Hall of Fame. Now, it really is. It's, it, it, I'm very touched. It's a, it, it's, it's a great honor. But I have to pay tribute tonight to the founder of our company, who was my father. He was such an incredible man. He was the person that laid the foundation for the company. He established the culture and the mission. And it was a very simple mission. He said, I want, he was an electrical contractor. He had no place to buy his supplies. So he said, I want to open a company on the South Shore to have a local source of supply 
for other contractors. And I want to be able to help them in any way I can by extending credit and having the best products and anything I can do to make them successful. And that was his mission. And you know, almost 100 years later, it is still the mission of our company. My father, I have <laughs> my father was very humble. He always said, I'm just a little guy and I want to help all the other little guys. His humility and gratefulness, he was so grateful for his adopted city of Quincy and that's why he named the company after his adopted city. He was so grateful to be an American. He said that was the greatest gift he ever received. And this feeling of humility and gratefulness is something that is so important to me and to our company. And I am grateful. Uh, and I, the company grew slowly but methodically. And in 1947, they had a big celebration to celebrate 25 electric years and they moved into a brand new building that my father had designed and had constructed at 19 Quincy Avenue in Quincy. And believe it or not, 75 years later, we're still there. <laughs> That is our corporate headquarters. We're kind of bursting at the seams, but, but it works. It works for us. Uh, he survived the Great Depression and World War II. And by 1969, we were covering the Cape and the islands, all from one location in Quincy. And that was the year he turned the company over to me. And which was, which, which was an amazing, amazing thing that he had enough confidence. I think secretly, my father had three daughters. Secretly, he sort of hoped one of us might produce a son-in-law who, <laughs> who could really take over the company. But we didn't do very well there. <laughs> So, he had to make do with what he had, girls. <laughs> and so, I, I was honored to have this responsibility. It wasn't easy, um, and I'll spare you a lot of the challenges and details about being a female CEO <laughs> in the 1970s and 80s and even 90s. Um, <laughs> And, and in a very male-dominated business. But <clears throat> thankfully, it was kind of lonely, and that's why I devoted so much of my time to reach out to other women and to encourage them and support them and bring them into the community. And so then, in, when I took over, we had this one location in Quincy, about $2 million in revenue, and we had a wonderful reputation in the trade, and we had no debt. So that was a good start. And I'm happy to report that today we have 30 locations in New England. Our revenue this year will be, <laughs> we hope to be about 230 million. And <clears throat> We have about 350 wonderful employees who make it all work. So uh, it's been a great journey and I am just so grateful and thankful to have had this opportunity. But I couldn't have done it without a lot of help. So I have to tell you about the people that helped me along the way. First of all, let me start with my family. First of all, my two wonderful daughters are here. Valia Marston and, and 
Sarah Meehan, everybody knows her as Gigi, and they're, <laughs> they're very, very busy, and they've done so many wonderful things in their life, but to me, one of the greatest accomplishments is between the two of them, they've produced five great grandchildren for, my, for me. <laughs> So, so my five grandchildren are here, and I'm going to ask them to stand up. <laughs> Sally, Sally Meehan, <laughs> William, Max, and Thomas Marston, <laughs> and, <laughs> and Tucker Meehan. so handsome and wonderful and not a day goes by that I don't hear from at least one of them and probably two or even three and they just call and check in to say how are you Mamie because you know they, they're worried and because I'm pretty old I'm almost <laughs> I'm almost as old as Granite City uh, <laughs> well Granite City was founded in 1923 and I was born in 1926 so that's a long time ago <laughs> so uh, also at the family table uh, is my wonderful niece Lori Roth who is always at my side to help me and then there is another incredibly amazing person at that family table that I have to tell you about. There's been a pro profoundly effect to me and to my company. And that is my son-in-law, Leo Mann. <laughs> Leo is the chairman of our board. We have a very strong, good board of directors that has strong oversight over everything in the company, and it's chaired by Leo. Also, I should mention, in his spare time, he is the president and CEO of W.B. Mason. <laughs> so, so he's, he's a very busy guy, and as a matter of fact, when I first met Leo, Gigi brought him home, it was about 1988, and our companies, oh, I said, at last I have someone in the family to talk business to. Oh, wow. And our companies were exactly the same size then. In 1988, we were both 18 million, right, Leo? Now, W.B. Mason is almost 10 times the size of Granite City. So he's done an un incredible, incredible job. And I am just so grateful for all of the wisdom and insight and vision that he's had to help me and to help Granite City Electric. <laughs> So about 10 or 12 years ago, when I was at the tender age of maybe 82, uh, I decided <laughs> to step back from the day-to-day -day operations of the company, which I did, and I left the company in the very capable hands of our wonderful um, management team, headed by our president, Steve Helley. The <clears throat> This. So many of them are here tonight, and I just would like to pay tribute to them. First of all, our CFO, Corey Hornbeck. Corey, stand up. Corey, and just, you know, uh, as all of you in business know, that if you don't have good financial management, you might as well just throw in the towel. But Corey doesn't let anything go by her. Everything is precise and perfect. And she has built a great team of people to work with her in the finance department. Uh, one of them is here, Sandra Wong, who is our controller. And uh, Angie Smalley, who it pays all the bills for us. <laughs> Our COO, 
who is the, our chief of operations is Adrian Grundy. And Adrian has just done a magnificent job for us. He, <laughs> he keeps all 30 locations moving in the right direction. And he's uh, headed up our two major hubs, one in Taunton and one in Chicopee. So if you're ever in the area, just stop in and visit us there because it, he's done an incredible job. I mean, everything has changed so much. I mean, we wind wire differently now and pipe and all those things, those 35,000 different SKUs that we have to handle. And they're all there in the hubs and delivered every day to the branches and to the customers. Uh, <clears throat> so thank you, Adrian. And then our head of sales, vice president of sales, Paul Knox. <laughs> Paul has spent a lifetime, his lifetime, in the electrical industry. Uh, and, I mean, he could sell pipe and wire to people who don't need it. He's so good. <laughs> Just amazing. And our Vice President of Marketing, Tom Tate. Tom... <laughs> Tom makes us all look good, and uh, and of course he uh, he does a lot. We do a lot with the Red Sox because we're the official distributor of electrical supplies to Fenway Park and to the Red Sox, and so that's always fun. And Tom has a great team of people in marketing. Um, also with us is our head of HR, Steve Constantino. And, and Steve has made sure that we have the best benefit practice in our industry, and it really is just wonderful, and thank you to Steve. And our newest vice president is Chris Baines. And <laughs> we're so happy to have Chris on our team. So uh, I have a great sense of confidence looking into the future. Uh, I think that Granite City, Granite City has come out, emerged from the pandemic stronger and better than ever. Uh, I, th I just know that great things will happen. We are committed to our mission and we are committed to remaining independent. Uh, and so I hope that we will be here for generations to come, and I'm going to look down and check it out and make sure. <laughs> so, in closing, I want to thank the Quincy Chamber of Commerce and Tim Cahill. Tim is, uh, we're so lucky to have Tim to lead our chamber, and uh, uh, just a great guy. Krista Haggerty, who is the incoming chair, and she did such a wonderful job. And we're in that exclusive club of daughters who take over their father's business, and I hope that that club continues to grow. Dolly to pieces in that club, too. And so that's a club we, that we want to keep moving. And, and of course, Thank you to Mayor Koch. As far as I'm concerned, Tom Koch should be our mayor for life because <laughs> <laughs> he, he has really performed miracles for Quincy. And I'm, I'm born and brought up in Quincy. I forgot to say Leo Mann is born and brought up in Quincy too. We're all Quincy people. We're, it's close to our heart. And so we are so lucky. And I am deeply grateful to the Chamber for this honor. Granite City Electric and all of our staff will treasure it forever. And I hope that many more businesses here follow us in the Hall of Fame. Thank you.
I will be brief here. So I just get your attention for a second. I want to offer my congratulations to Granite City Electric and CEO Phyllis Godwin for being inducted into our Business Hall of Fame. And as you can tell, it was a very, it is a very, very richly deserved honor. And I also want to congratulate Cubic Labs, Ian Kane, and John O'Keefe for being awarded the Bruce Wood Grant. If I might close with a few thoughts about what, it, what makes the Quincy Chamber special. Just a minute, okay? And then we'll, the bar will be back and we'll be going. Thank you. Three years ago, on a suggestion by then board member Mike Feenan, we created a $5,000 grant to be awarded annually to a deserving small business. We named it after one of the chamber's founding members, the late Bruce Wood. We raised the funds for the inaugural grant through sponsorships at our annual golf tournament, and the second grant, the one that um, we presented here today, the third grant actually, was funded by Kathy Wood and her sons. This year, this year I wanted to create something more permanent, so I asked our founding board members, our other founding board members, if they would help. The answer was a resounding and immediate yes by everyone who knew Bruce, served with Bruce, and were friends with the Wood family. I would like to take this time at the end of our program to publicly acknowledge these business leaders who helped to create this chamber in 2009 and who continue Bruce's legacy and their own by always answering the call when asked and often without being asked. Ed Cohane, that's here. Sean Galvin, Ed Fleming, Dolly DePisa, Frank Trainer, Mike McFarland, Sean Curry, Greg McDonald, and Tony Ignetti. These men and women have agreed to fund the Bruce Wood Grant annually so that as the Quincy Chamber in the city of Quincy moves into the future, we never forget our past. Thank you all for coming. We want you all to continue enjoying each other's company tonight, tomorrow, and forever. The most important lesson we learned in the past year is that we need each other and we need to be with each other. So enjoy tonight. Enjoy your summer, and don't forget to spend all of your money in Quincy. Thank you all very much. <laughs>